Hey guys, today I wanted to go ahead and do a video on uh, what lures are my go-to lures when the water temps are dropping and the bite is getting tough. Uh, basically, it's uncover your late fall, winter type of fishing. Um, if you're watching this, it's either you're just a regular follower of my channel or you just don't know when to give up like me and you fish through the winter. Um, I'm a power fisherman, so I do like to try to maintain a fast presentation uh, when possible. And how I do that is with flat-sided crankbaits. Um, I have a couple different flat-sided crankbaits here. This is a Strike King Lucky Shad. And this one's capable of diving down to 8 feet. Uh, I have another Strike King one here, which is also a flat-sided crankbait. Um, this one here, I believe, was like down to 12 feet. And here's another one in the square bill, flat-sided Spro Little John. So. Uh, there's just a couple of them there for the flat-sided crankbaits. With the crankbaits, the nice thing about those is you can just retrieve it nice and slow. Um, other things I'll throw is your, uh, your lipless crankbaits. Whether you know it be a Bill Lewis, uh, Red Eye Shad, you know, whatever brand you use, I like to use those. With the lipless crankbaits, I'll either do a slow retrieve or also do a vertical presentation. If I'm finding them on the fish finder, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, after locating them, I'll just free spool it, drop it straight down, and I'll, I'll just jig it. I've had good success with using the rattle traps that way. Um, on that same note, what I'll do is with uh, spoons. So I have a couple spoons here before you. This one here is pretty big. We got another one there. And I'll do the same thing with those. Um, if I'm finding them out deep and they're just hugging the bottom or suspended a little bit off the bottom, I'll just jig them. You know, have my spool tensioner all the way uh, I'll have it loose enough to where I can just have a, jig, a straight drop, and I'll just vertical jig them. Um, other things I have uh, as far as lateral presentation goes are your swim jigs. You know, whether you got a B&M swim jig like this one here and then drop the trailer down to size to match whatever the forage is or the size of bass in the body of water you're fishing. Or if you need to downsize even more, just go straight with the swim jig itself. This one's a skinny dipper, so if you need to downsize it even more, depending on how you're actually rigging it, you can go with like the skinny dipper junior. Uh, I'm going with the swim jig or the swim jig by itself. It's probably because I'm fishing where there's a lot of vegetation or some sort of structure that could cause for the treble hooks on the flat side of crankbaits to snag. Um, continuing with the lateral presentation, I'll go with jerk baits. So with the jerk bait here, I have it as a medium diver, and then also another one here, which is in like the four to six range. That other one I believe is like eight to twelve. Um, depending on which depth you're, you're finding them at. Will, be, will dictate which one you'll actually go with and obviously match color and size dictated off whatever the forage is in that body of water you're fishing. A good difference between the two on the crankbaits, swimbaits, and jerkbaits is is with the suspending ones, once you get it down to depth, you can just pause it there and leave it in the strike zone much longer, which is why so many people mention the jerkbait when it comes to that cold weather fishing. Uh, with a swim bait and swim jig, if you need to slow it down to keep it in that strike range, just downsize your weight. Uh, that'll be dictated on the depth. If you're fishing from the bank and you're fishing like a pond or whatnot, which is not really deep, you know, you could be anywhere from weightless, uh, 116 ounce bullet weight, belly weight, whatever you're choosing. It's like an eight ounce of weight for that particular uh, setup. Uh, if you're fishing deeper than that, then just get whatever weight is necessary to get you to that appropriate depth. Uh, going back to the jerk baits, um, if I'm fishing from the bank or something with high, with a lot of vegetation, I'll just go with a with a fluke, all right? and just work it just like a jerk bait. Um, once again, picking the size fluke and color to just match whatever the forage is. Uh, some other baits I'll go to as a go-to when that bite is getting tough: the jig. Um, what was that? I believe it was last winter. Was, uh, I caught one, it's a four pounder on this one here. It's a half ounce black and blue Booyah jig with that same trailer on there with the Beaver uh, Tightlines UV Beaver. The only difference was is I didn't have the tails split. I kept the tails together, to give that little bit more subtle action to help with that more subtle presentation. 
Uh, got a couple other different jigs here. You know, color will be dictated on forge and water clarity. Uh, even got that finesse jig. Um, you, you don't have to go with the finesse jig, you guys. You know, you can still catch them out there on your other jigs. Um, but the finesse jig, you know, if that bite is tough, something you might want to switch out to and try out. Um, types of heads and weights will all, just all be dictated on depth and the bottom substrate that you're fishing on which one you're going to choose. Um, another thing I like to use is plastics. Uh, with plastics, basically what I'm looking for is zero or minimum uh, appendages. I want the bait to be subtle in the water. I want to be able to dead stick it if necessary or just to have it to have a, a subtle action to it. Um, with some of my recent videos you'll see that I, I was catching them on the magnum trick worm. All right. uh, I got smaller size trick worms here. I got shaky head worm and the Cinco. It doesn't have to be a Gary Yamamoto Cinco. It could be any stick bait. But basically what I'm getting at is you're trying to mimic a dying bait or, or basically an easy meal for the fish. Uh, this time of the year, the basket, the third jig, and the metabolism drops due to water temperatures. They're just not feeding as much. They are still feeding, but they're trying to find a meal that's going to fulfill them without, with the least amount of energy necessary to catch that bait. Uh, these are more or less my go-to baits that have worked for me in the past few winters. Um, I like to be adding, hopefully, in my next next winter. I like to be able to hopefully tell you it was a confidence lure would be a large swim bait, whether it's an 8-inch HUD or even a 6-inch HUD. So far I've been fishing these through the fall and I have been getting hits on them. Um, I am new to the swim bait game, so I'm not saying that is a go-to lure uh, on my side just because I, you know, I, I don't have no credit to give you for it. But by, next, uh, by this time next year, hopefully I'll be able to tell you that, hey, this is another go-to lure and something for you to try out. Uh, these huddle stins are great for fishing the bottom when they are hugging the bottom and with the 6 inch 8 inch model it's got a really nice subtle presentation. Um, if you fish it nice and slow on the bottom, pull it in front of some lunker, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to present an easy mill as long as you're not overpowering the size lure to the actual fish in the body of water you're fishing. Um, some other things I wanted to talk about was scents. Uh, we got Bang, Liquid Mayhem, and Spike It. Um, I think I've shown in plenty of my videos me using Spike It on occasion, maybe even the Bang. I don't know if I've added it in any of my videos to Liquid Mayhem, but I got a ton of ton of scents. I uh, just brought up a few to show you guys. Um, you know, during those uh, colder times of the year, the bite is difficult. You're not going to be catching necessarily as many. Um, and what you're going to want to do is do your best to entice that that fish to bite. Uh, so scents could anywhere help with the chartreuse coloring. Uh, talking about that, you know, it rains a lot more this time of the year, so the water could be dingy and muddy. Uh, the chartreuse could be an added benefit as far as making it to where that particular lure is more visible for the fish to actually identify it and fix it and, you know, get that bite for you. And then it's got the garlic scent also as an added incentive for that fish to bite. Uh, that particular one's a dip type of, of scent. Uh, probably now a month now maybe maybe almost three months now I've been using liquid mayhem and I've had some good success with that and it's a gel type uh, scent that you can rub on your plastics and your jigs and whatnot possibly even can use it on your hard base but I have yet to try that uh, the bang the spray this one here is a shad formula um, I also use a lot of their uh, crawl formula I think it's the pure crawl um, you know give that fish the added incentive to actually want to bite your lure um, you know any little thing could possibly help make you have a better and more successful winter bass fishing uh, you know, year. But uh, let's see, I think I covered everything. Uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out. And by next year, hopefully I can tell you with confidence that the huddle stings will also be a good go-to lure. All right, you guys, good luck this winter, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.